This is kind of an update video for a little project I've been working on for a while. On this channel, you never quite know what you're going to get, whether it's going to be a camper video, some CNC stuff, woodworking things, boat videos, or all kinds of other interesting mechanical things. So lately I've been working back with some old ham radio gear, and I've been pulled back into old school CW stuff, Morse code stuff, which I played with a long, long time ago. And we've gone through a bunch of little QRP low power rigs recently. But one thing that's been really cool that's caught my attention is playing around with some apps to cat control some cheap rigs. So that's what this little sort of update video is about. There are a handful of very inexpensive single sideband sound card based kind of tinkering around radios for HF stuff. And this little USDX, I paid, I think, about $125 for. And it does voice, and it does CW, does code, and you can connect it to the computer and do digital modes, FT8, FT4, some other cool things as well. But I pretty much just hang with Morse code stuff. I like using a keyer. I like the paddles. Never got into the straight key stuff but for this I really like it. As far as the radio interface goes, or the phone interface goes, this is just an old Galaxy S7. Had it laying around. We switched over to iPhones a while back, but we've got a pile of these old phones that are not being used anymore. And there's a really cool app on the Google Play Store, Pocket RX TX Lite. There's a pro, a paid version, which I did upgrade to. The developer I had some questions for after I picked up the free one, and he responded very quickly, so we switched over to the paid app, and it works really well. It's not really designed for the USDX at this point. The developer is working on that. We can use a TS-480 command, sort of, I guess, using the Kenwood software connections and data information to make it work, but it does work. And it works for some of the functions, which is really, really cool. So we can change our frequency on here. And our corresponding frequency on the little USDX changes as well. We can switch bands also. So just go to the bands. We're on 40 now, which is 7 megahertz. But if we want to switch bands, like if we want to go to the 30, if I touch the 30, that should change on here. So we're showing 10 on there, and as soon as we do this, then we're into 10 megahertz. So the band switching works, which is cool. We can program memories in here. If you hold down the memories, kind of like the old school cars where you push the button in or pull the button out, you can program it so you hold that down, and you can put in a name or a clue to what your program is. The push to talk does work as well, but I'm just using key right now. The USDX does have a keyer built into it and it works moderately well. I like to have quicker control of the speed, the weight, the tone, the volume, all these things here. And the other cool thing about this old MFJ keyer control is it's got the tune button here. So when we're tuning up a couple of antennas I've got outside, it's really useful just to kick that. And as far as tuners go, I keep coming back to this manual MFJ one. It works great, doesn't use any power, and it's a really solid unit. I do have a couple small automatic tuners, some QRP as well as for more power. They work okay, they're fine, but I seem to get a little bit more fine control with these guys, and I can squeak out a little bit more control on the meter by just kind of rotating these knobs. And it's fun to play with these knobs also. All the power for the stuff here is coming from the Jackery. Can certainly use a power supply plugged into the wall. You can use lots of other options. The USDX doesn't take much juice. This has a nine volt battery in it on its own. But for running the amp, when I want to run the amp, that pulls this as well. Another cool thing about the Jackery is that you can see what your actual draw is, which is kind of neat. And I have this all connected to the one button there, so when I push that one button, the radio comes on, and 
we're good to go with that stuff. Something that I found out after getting this USDX, and there's a whole menu section in here that you can adjust all kinds of cool things. But one of the problems I had was the audio out was lacking. It was either too quiet or too loud, or it would get distorted. So I found a happy space in here for the audio out, and then picked up this little guy on Amazon, which is just a little headphone amplifier, and it's got a little battery in it. You charge it up with a USB cord, so you use your phone cord to power it up, and then you have volume control, really fine volume control on here with a pair of earbuds or headphones for the back of the amplifier. It also has a high-low gain switch in the back, so you can pull out some weaker signals, which is kind of fun as well. Regarding the amp, the amp is interesting. Uh, it's a linear amp. It's designed for HF. It's designed for QRP radios. You really can't or re really shouldn't drive it with more than about 5 or 6 watts. And that 5 or 6 watts in will get you up into the 40 watt out range. And you can do a pass through, turn it off and it's on a pass through, or turn it on and it's ready to go. It's not putting out power now, but if you want it, it's there. Most rigs have a way to connect the amp to the rig. So as soon as you key up or send out the code, then it engages the amp. This one doesn't have a pre-built port. It would require some, wi some wiring up, some soldering, some, some schematic work that I haven't gotten into yet. So what I'm doing is kind of a workaround. And just pushing this button, it turns on the amp, and we can send our code, and we turn off the amp, and then we drop back down. So it's a workaround, and the cool thing is I can use this for some of my other rigs as well. And getting back to the Jackery, it's also cool we can see what our little minimal draw is, even if we're not doing much of anything. So it's really not pulling anything right now. This is just in standby, but even in standby it's showing one watt. This will last a long time with this stuff. Turn that off, and that should drop out. So it's just kind of kind of cool, kind of fun in here. This is a really quickly thrown together little stand mount. I like things to be solid, so these are actually screwed down to the base here, so this stuff isn't going anywhere. For the base here, for this little remote head, so to speak, for this guy, it controls the radio through the cat cable just through the USB on the bottom. There's an on-the-go cable connector here that goes into this. There's a converter part here that takes the signal from this so it can talk to the actual radio. And I'll pull out a couple of those and show those on Amazon. I bought five of them for about 10 bucks, I think, as far as the converters go. So I'll grab one of those in a moment. This shows the little, <clears throat> the little converter here. You can see how tiny these little things are, and they are super cheap. Just bought on Amazon, and we only use the bottom three connectors, the ground, the RXD, and the TXD. And this plugs into here, and then the prongs go to the back for the cat control, and the cat control goes into a connector for the back. And I went with these because we've got the three screw connector ports and it was just easy to wire up. Pretty simple. I can share the connection points on the video as well. So it comes together pretty fast. Usually I like to use headphones for the CW stuff but if I'm here and I'm just listening and don't want to use earphones or earbuds We've just got a small amplified speaker here.
same when I'm running here, about 7, so 800 watts. That, that works just as well. We're on 40 meters during the daytime, so the band's not real active. The fun with little low power radios, most of these contacts were made with less than 5 watts. Some of them made less with, made with less than 3 watts, and I used a 9 volt battery on one of these little QRP radios too. And this is all CW stuff, which travels pretty well, but you can certainly cover some distance with basic radios. So just a quick overview on what we're playing around with here. Pretty simple stuff for the most part when it comes to these things, and it's really cool to have this control on here for not much money. The big rigs have the detachable head units, and we kind of do, kind of don't here, but it's fun to play around with. If I wanted to use the microphone for USDX, what I would do is cut a hole in the back here so we could get the plug in, and then that would just plug in the back. We could hang a microphone out there if we wanted to. But most of my stuff is just CW. I know that the designer, the developer for the software is hoping to get a waterfall display and a whole bunch of other cool things on here as well. This is configurable. You can program some different buttons on here. It's nice to be able to jump up and down on your frequencies too. You can change the size of the font. You can do all kinds of other cool things. At the moment, the attenuation, the noise blankers, the gain control, these things are not engaged. So again, that's figuring out what the configuration information is from the radio for the cat port. And that's something that's still in the works. But it's fun to play with. Not expensive, and kind of a cool little update. So, thanks very much for taking a look. Mm -hmm.